Hello and welcome to Bread and Butter. My name's Wendy Hargraves. I'm coming to you live from Carlton North, bustling Carlton North. There's traffic everywhere and they're probably all coming to this restaurant, La Luna Bistro, the home of Australia's foremost meat expert chef, Mr. Adrian Richardson. Very lucky to be able to see him today to pop in for a masterclass in how to glaze Christmas ham. Now it's only a few weeks to go until Christmas and Adrian has all the hacks for producing the most beautiful ham. And we're gonna be going inside the restaurant and finding out exactly how to do it. Right, so we're all set to go, but we thought we might fast forward through this bit because we really were rambling on. The main thing to remember is the key to a great Christmas ham is finding really good Australian ham. And you do that by looking out for the pink pork mark. That's proof that the ham was made right here in Australia. Now, Adrian will argue that it's his glaze that does all the work. So let's just see, here we go. So the first thing I'll do is take it out and pop it on the, uh, on the bench. And that allows it to bring it up to room temperature. Um, if it's an even temperature all the way through, it's going to cook and heat up a lot quicker. So that's one of the most important things. Okay. Put it out on the bench. That's the same for all meat, right? Exactly. Yeah. You're going to roast, that's a big piece of meat. Mm. So we want to put it in the oven. We don't want it to burn on the outside. How long has this been sitting out? Uh, that's been sitting out about half an hour. You know, okay. I've been shooing the flies away and the blowies and stuff. No, there isn't any in here. But um, <laughs> and that will allow it to, to, to cool down. You can sort of feel it. I mean, you know, I'm not saying leave it out for overnight, but a good hour, half an hour, it allows you to get everything ready, take the packaging off it, and it just, you just smell it. It just mm. fills the kitchen up with that yeah. beautiful aroma. It is. It does smell good. All and right. how, how big, what are we talking about, 10 kilos here? Oh, let me just weigh that. That's, um, oh, that's uh, 7.473894. <laughs> He's yeah. right. There's a little barcode on his back. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's and the other thing, when you do take it out of the packaging, let it breathe. Um, sometimes you'll find things like plastic on it to make it look nice and pretty. Sometimes you'll find uh, plastic underneath it because there's a couple of bones here. Um, and so they usually put some plastic, or they call it bone guard, over those bones to stop it puncturing the cryovac that's on there. Ah. So just have a little check, pick it up, move it around, maybe take a little slice off it and taste it. Mm. Um, and make sure you remove all the plastic and, and netting and anything that, 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 that's on there. Mm -hmm. And then we just pop it on there, let it come up to temperature. But for me, it's all about the glaze. Yeah, it is. That's the biggest <sighs> ham hack of the lot, is having a great, a great glaze. Exactly, exactly. And this is where you can get really traditional or you can get really kinky. It's up to you what you want to do. Tell me you're going kinky. I'm, I'm just, just a little bit kinky. You know me, I've got, I've <laughs> I've got, I've got a few things up my sleeve. Awesome. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is, I've got a little pan here. I'm going to turn this on, this little induction. There we go. It's going already. And we're going to start loading it up with all of our favourite ingredients, or my favourite ingredients to put together. And you think you're just, uh, just going to come in and just No, I've here. got my champagne. I've got my Prosecco here. Sorry. Prosecco. And I've got a microplane here. I've got some, well, a little bit of ginger. What? So, I have to work? Oh, my God. Just a little bit of microplane okay. ginger, a little bit of microplane orange. And why not, while you're there, put a bit of lime in there as well. Just do it straight onto the board. And do you do it straight off here? Yeah, yeah, I, I don't worry about the feel. I think okay. the feel's where a lot of nutrition and flavour and vitamins and all those things. Okay. Yeah, cool. you know, you know I'm, I'm, I'm drawing it from a long bow here, aren't I? <laughs> now, the next thing I'm going to start off, I've got my pan on nice and uh, nice and gentle. I've got some uh, some of this sugar here. This is uh, brown sugar, and this is wholemeal sugar. So when it's brown like this, it's so wholemeal. it's healthy. It's healthy. It's very good for you. So make sure <laughs> you put a nice big, say, about a cup of that. Now, the measurements are a little bit loose here, so we're just going to have a bit of fun. And in goes some honey. This is one of my favourite sweeteners of the all other time. healthy sugar. Exactly. Well, right. all those little busy bees have been buzzing around and um, that's and true. making this delicious honey. So you make sure you got plenty of that in there. Um, that's about a cup as well. We've got some of this raw sugar, which is also brown, which mm -hmm. means it's wholemeal as well and very good for you as well. <laughs> in that goes. It's all about the sweetness. This is oh Christmas. yeah. How much sugar have we got in here now? Oh, we've got a, a couple of a couple of tablespoons. Oh, I think, right. You know? Now, the other thing I'm going to add is, is marmalade. Now, every Christmas, someone always delivers or gives you gifts some uh, big jam, marmalade, yep. their favourite hands. 
this is a great way to grab all those jars and pop it into the uh, into your glaze. So this is some kumquat marmalade that my uh, my stepfather John made for me. He makes a lot of it. Kumquat marmalade. That oh, sounds good. It is. It is. I love a kumquat because it's got that slightly sour mm -hmm. and sweetness as well, and it is delicious. I'm gonna. Mm. That's a chef's spoon. <laughs> Delicious flavour. So I'm going to get in there with this uh, with this spoon here. Right. How much how much ginger do you need? Oh, about that's about perfect. Yeah. So if that's uh, about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of grated fresh ginger, if you can, you can use um you can use the powdered ginger, the dry ginger, if you want. That works really well. So okay. there goes the come up there. And orange zest as well. I mean, they're all the flavours of Christmas already, aren't they? Yeah, that's right. It smells beautiful. There oh, except go. for the. You take the sticker over there. The sticker, no, that's the, uh, we usually take the sticker off, but um, <laughs> I'm sort of um, I'm a bit loose today. So sugar's in there, honey's in there, a whole meal sugar's in there. We need to add some butter. Of course. You want to know why? Because everything's better with butter. Exactly, because mm. butter. That's what it's it is. Butter. In it goes. Um, I like the butter because it sort of rounds out the flavour, smooths everything up, and I love using butter. I'm actually on a retainer from the Cardio Board in Melbourne. All the surgeons there send me a check every year because I send them lots of customers. Thank you so much, Adrian, they say. Oh, my goodness. Cinnamon goes in there as well. A good pinch of cinnamon. Be careful of fresh or ground cinnamon because it is quite strong, so only a little bit of that because um, we don't want to overpower it. I've got star anise, which are these lovely little... Uh, star things here, great flavour as well. You can yeah. buy it ground or you can get them whole like that, in they go. And of course, we've got some uh, rosemary. I'll put a couple of little things of rosemary in there as well. We like a little bit of um, fresh herb in there. And you do, you've done a great job. Now grab some Hello. of those, that ginger and the orange there with my uh, little knife here. And that's beautifully done. So the ginger on a microplane, nice and fine. And the uh, orange peel as well goes in there. You can just peel it off if you want, but Microplaning is a great way to get that flavour out of it and make it nice and delicious. Why not put some pepper in there? Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six. You like that? <laughs> in it goes. And the smell is coming up. It's almost like we're making grown up toffee here today. It is, it is. And then we're going to make it even more grown up in a second. This is lovely. This is also oh, rose <laughs> blossom water. Ooh. It smells great. You could use yeah. it as like a little. Uh, there we go, as an aftershave and make everyone nice and happy. Oh, yeah. A couple of drops in that gives it a lovely flavour as well. I love so your drops. Is, that's a beautiful one there. Have a little look at that one. You can buy that from any Middle Eastern store. They're worth just a couple of bucks, but they give it a really, really nice flavour. So nice. In that goes. Um, now, we need some adult flavours here. We've got some brandy. I always say when you are adding any alcohol that you do have a little taste of it and just make sure that it's... Is it's it, not is off. It good. It's okay. It's good. It hasn't it's good. gone off. It hasn't gone off yet. Really important. <laughs> and I will say, if you are adding things like brandy over a stove and you are using gas, be very careful because there's a lot of alcohol in the brandy. And if you've got a gas stove, you can get that alcohol burning off and exploding everywhere. So keep it safe. A little tip is, if you are adding alcohol and you have got a gas stove and you're a bit worried about, have a tight fitting lid handy. Mm. So if it does pop up and you've got flames going out of control, you can pop the lid on. All the fireys will love that advice uh, because the amount of fires they go to with yeah. that stuff. All right, in goes some Cointreau as well. Now we need to taste this. Do you like, um, what we got? what's that little glass jar here? The little... What we do is see this thing here? This is a little <laughs> shot glass. Can you try some Cointreau right, there? Make right. sure it's not off. Really, really important. How's that? No, it's good actually. It's good. Yeah, yeah. Right. Not off. Now, I'll just give that a little bit of a sizzle. And you can see, oh, see it's... Bubble, bubble, toil and trouble. Oh, man. Yeah. Look oh, at goodness. that. And uh, it's starting to bubble away. Now, I'll turn it down a little bit because we don't want it to go over the top. Um, it will be very hot. So you want it, when you're boiling up sugar, sugar can boil to a very high temperature. Mm. You can get up to you know, 200 degrees. If it hits your skin, it's going to peel off the skin with it. So be very right careful. Right before peeling off the ham skin. Yeah, right. don't, you don't want to be. That's the only skin we want to be peeling off. Uh, hit it with a whisk just to break up some of that jam and get it boiling away nice and gently. And look at that butter there. See that butter? It's just sort of melting gently. And I know that, you know how people worry about the fat and cholesterol in butter? You know, they don't want to eat it because it's, you know, it's not good for you. I know that when I mix it with the marmalade like this and it just simmers away, all the fat and cholesterol in that butter, you can see it, is starting to rise like steam. It's starting mm. to come up. Mm. That's the fat and cholesterol coming up. Uh, it's rising into the atmosphere and will actually repair I the ozone layer. Can you see that? <laughs> 
This is great. We're I've fixing done, climate change at the same exactly, time. Exactly, it's a great issue. And I've done some work with uh, with Melbourne University, and we've uh, we've made sure that this is uh, this is the chemical reaction. It's, that but, happens. it's not carbon capture and storage; it's butter capture and storage, oh, right? There we go. Capturing <laughs> it. Now, while we're here, I've got this orange here, and we'll just um, cut this in half. One of the things, because we use a lot of uh, orange zest, so I always find these oranges in the fridge with the zest they can often, and they haven't been squeezed, so a little bit of orange juice Ooh, in there. Oh, look how lovely and juicy it is. It's good, isn't it? Mm. Now, this is the things that I like to put in here. If you want to get really crazy, you can do things like plum sauce, balsamic, uh, imagine some sweet chilli sauce, you know, those sorts of things are delicious as well. What do you think? Yeah. I love it. All so right. this is going to give, a, I suppose, more of a European flavour. This one. Traditional. Mm. traditional. A little bit more, yeah, slightly exactly. boozy and traditional. Exactly, mm. exactly. You can imagine me on a Christmas morning, you know, just taking shots of Not stuff. Test. And, yeah. Exactly. Not test. Test everything. Test and taste everything. <laughs> yes. All right, now we're off to the hands. That's simmering away nicely. We'll let that simmer away for about uh, 15 minutes until it reduces, mm -hmm. or about four minutes in TV time. Okay, or great. Or internet, interweb time. Now, this is the hand here. A lot of people just score this, but you need to take the skin off it. Yes. This is the outer layer here. And this is the tricky bit for a lot of people. Like ah. to, to, get, to get the skin off without taking half the leg off. Well, let's see if I can do it without making it, uh, making it a mess of it. But also say, watch good. carefully. This is, this is the bit that so, mm, nice, where I come undone. Big, okay, watching carefully. This is a nice sharp paring knife. And I just cut into the skin like this. And I'm doing these sort of big wedges like this. So I make it look like, remember Barney and Rubble? You know, yeah, uh, the, the, the Flintstones. Yeah, so if you've got that Flintstone sort of look, I'll turn it around so the camera can see that. It's like the bon yeah. Brontosaurus burger. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Like, this, this would be like a, a, a lamb chop, you know, lamb chop or a Bronto burger. And that's <laughs> easy. So I've done these little, little lines there. That's to make the uh, the bone or the knuckle part here, make it, you know, for a presentation, make it look nice. So you won't really digging that hard either. You just need to just go through the surface exactly. to get it. Okay. I'll show you. It's about a centimetre. Now back over to here. Bring the camera over. See, so we've got bubbling away here. Keep an eye on this. Be really careful. I've turned it right down, so it's just simmering away. Don't uh, put this on and go have a couple of cigarettes and a couple of beers out the back. Keep an eye on it. It's yep. really important. Uh, now, and this is something you can do before the day too, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Um, you can experiment on the glaze a couple of days beforehand, get it exactly right, and maybe you can make the glaze and send that as little presents for people. Oh, good idea. Exactly, but um, don't, don't give them my recipe, you say you have to make it right. Now this <laughs> bit here is really easy, so if you just come to this part here, you can see, well, I'm just going to do this with my finger. I just grab it and pinch it, and I peel it back. So if you do this really carefully, You'll be able to peel it all the way back like this and get most of it. See, you know, I haven't used a knife and I've kept this lovely fat on the outside here. When you get to the end here, you just sort of take it easy and peel it off like that. So a lot of people, we get a knife in there. You don't need to. You know, tear that off and you've got the, uh, the fat on the outside. Mm. Now, we don't waste this. Um, that is fantastic if you want to use it for... You know, cooking beans or, um, you know. A bit of ham flavour too. Ham flavour. If you've got a soup, you can cut it up and freeze it. If you're making a minestrone soup, put a couple of those pieces in there and it gives it a great flavour because nothing is better than the flavour of ham because it almost tastes like bacon. Like well, that? the other thing is also, it's a bit like the rind of a good push, a, a good parmesan or, a, you know, the cheese rinds that you throw in the bolognese, right? Exactly. It just gives you that flavour. Exactly. So and what happens to it? Does it stay intact? Uh, that will stay intact. It, it sort of goes a bit soft and, and disintegrates through it. You can chop it up nice and fine. And the longer you cook it, the more it becomes sort of really gelatinous and it mm. just falls through it. And as you eat your minestrone soup that's vegetarian, you get these lovely little pieces of ham. Uh, skin that's been cooked all the way through it. There we go. Yeah. Like okay. that? Now, we should have put a vegan vegetarian warning on our video, but yeah, sorry. And it, you know, what's what's that word again? The, uh, we don't use the, the V word around here. We don't use the <laughs> word here. Now we're yep. looking at this. It looks great. We've got this is the, the 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 fat side of it. This is where the flavour is. This is all the um, all the best things that are on this side here. And you can see it's nice and clean. I didn't use a knife. I didn't butcher it. No. I just. Peeled it off with my, my, my fingers. You know? Yeah, it's just, I'm like, it, 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 it makes a jagged mess. It's so much better. Okay, use your fingers, push your fingers underneath it and peel it off nice and gently. It helps if it's been sitting on the bench here for, right. you know, 10 to 15 minutes at least because that sort of softens it up a little bit and makes it easy to peel off. Yeah. Um, well, we that's an awesome ham hack. Yeah. 
Cost of admission. You, yes. you've just, exactly. Here we go. I've paid my way yeah. already. <laughs> now, now this hand here. Now usually when people score the outside of it, they use a sharp knife like this, and they'll you know run from one side to the other with the knife on that side, and they'll do this on the other side, and they do that crisscross all yeah, the way around it. Yeah, a little bit artistic. Exactly, and that is so traditional. That's what Nana used to do, and that's what, what my family's been and doing stick for... stick the clothes in and, and all that. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to do that. Mm. We're, going, we're going out on the edge here. We're going to get a little bit kinky. <laughs> we're going to go funky. We're going to do some awesome. different stuff. Ooh, and I've been doing this, doing this... That this, this is my... This is my Ooh. scallop salmon knife. So this knife in particular is only used for, for salmon and cooked meats. So that's what this knife is for. Nice bit of flex with it. You would never do anything else with any raw meat. This is what this knife is for. Ooh. And I've had this for 32 years. Wow. I got it when I was four years old. And, um, <laughs> and I've kept it with me ever since. Oh, <laughs> now it looks like a bread knife. I didn't know there was such a thing as a salmon knife. Oh, this isn't a scalp one. This is for, for cutting cooked meats. A bread knife is, has got a jagged yeah, yeah. edge to it. And that's for cutting through bread. You would never cool. use this on a bread knife. But, um, but th these are all little, little tips. So if yeah. you find one of these in the drawer, um, it's only for cooked meats. It's a perfect carving knife. Now, I'm going to use this on the ham now to show you my technique of scoring the ham. Now, a lot of people do those crisscrosses. I don't do that anymore. I've come across my new method of doing it, which is cutting it all the way through here like this. So I'm cutting the, the knife through about, what would you call that, like a... a bit over an inch. Yeah, a bit over an inch, maybe four or five centimetres. There we mm -hmm. go. So I just cut it all the way so through. So it goes into the meat. Exactly. The, yeah. And uh, you want to hold it nice and gently. And that's, just be careful. At this stage here, you've been handling the fat and the skin, so your hand can get a lot wow. of the fat on it. So the knife becomes slippery, your hand becomes slippery. You know, you might want to grab something like a, like a cloth, wipe your mm. hands, keep it nice and clean, and hold it nice and firm. Or get someone else to hold the hand for you mm. while you slash across it. Yes. Not something I would do. I'll, I'll do the <laughs> slashing, you can do the holding. So I'll just go all the way through here like this. And you know, about a centimetre, would you say? Yeah, a centimetre apart, I would say, exactly. yeah. And you try and cut all the way through. So you're actually, this, this method, you're actually getting more scoring into the meat, aren't you? Yes. Without yeah. it breaking away in little cubes. Exactly. And the other beauty of this is as it's cooking in the oven, all of the lovely glaze, that sweetness that we love so much, is going all the way through and into the meat because it's the glaze that brings out the sweetness of the mm. ham. It sort of reacts with the uh, with the salt and the brine and makes it really, really delicious. You get oh. really excited at this time of year, don't you? You're <laughs> one of those people. I, I, I am. I, am. I mean, having <laughs> restaurants, this is the, the busiest time of the year. We've got stuff going on everywhere, people everywhere. And I'm thinking about what we're going to cook for Christmas for my family. Ham is always a great feature, but there's always a couple of other things. My background's Italian. So for us, we always have ravioli or gnocchi, because that's what mm. my nonna would make. Um, she's uh, passed away, God bless her. Um, and Lives on in your gnocchi. Oh, she's watching over me right now. She's, she's watching. Oh, you know, no, don't do it like that. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> right there? What are you doing? So that's, uh, that's my nonna. She's lovely, lovely. Oh, bless. She, oh, I, I try, this is the thing for me. I try and bring a little bit of my nonna into the restaurant. So when you come in here to eat, it's that warm, fuzzy feeling of my nonna. Just with her arms wrapped around you, that's what I think. A, a bit Big of a hug. It'll bring a tear Aww. to my eye if I keep on going. Now, <laughs> we've got that ready to go. Beautiful. How easy is that? That was super easy. And you don't need to muck around with scoring it, and, and, and you know, and the end result I think is, is the best. So the next thing I try and do is, um, you know, ovens are all different sizes, so I try and match the uh, oven tray with my oven at home. Um, if you've got a, a small oven, you might want to, you know, get a tray. This will fit into a small oven if you sit it on its mm. side, but I use an oven tray that fits into the rack because mm. you can fit more onto that onto that tray. Yep. And what I do here is I've got a wire rack underneath it. So have a little look at that. Wire rack underneath it. I put some foil over it. And my little pro tip is some baking paper because baking paper stops everything from sticking. So that's my little pro tip on Less there. washing up. That's exactly. what we love, right? Washing, what's that word again? Mm, yeah, you've got people to do that, don't you? <laughs> well, that's, <laughs> that's, a bit, that's what I worked out really early. If you can cook really well, you can cook and then other people will clean up after you. I so figured that out too. That was my rule from the moment I had family. Exactly. I cook, you clean. Exactly. Yeah. And it works beautifully, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Now, we're ready to go here. Normally, Ooh. Oh, look at that. Bubbling oh. away. Now, 
Oh, this, the smell. The smell is just divine. That buttery, sweet. Oh, oh it's really, Do you want to have a little taste? There's no spoon there. Why don't you have a little taste? It's going to be red hot, so take it. Just give it a little bit of a blow, and we'll just make it. This is the thing. It's important to taste things as you go in the kitchen. So a little bit of a, a little look at that. We've got little bits of um, kumquat on there, and it's going to be red Ooh. hot, so let it cool down a little bit. It smells like Christmas pudding. Oh. Have you burnt off all your taste buds? Oh, my God. That's fantastic. Mm. I think that I've excelled myself with this one. You need to actually bottle this as a cocktail. I think so. <laughs> well, that's a great idea. Right? I'll save some of it. We'll mix mm. it with some vodka, shake it up over the sauce. Oh, yeah. What Ooh. we call it? The Christmas ham cocktail. Adrian and, <laughs> Adrian and Wendy's Christmas ham cocktail. Glazed eyes. <laughs> yes, there we go. It will be well and truly glazed after that. Now, we've got this ready to go. We've got the, um, the, the question, which is a great question you just asked. What temperature is the oven? <laughs> That's a great question. I, would, I was just about to ask that myself. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to preheat the oven at 160 degrees Celsius. Mm -hmm. And then um, it cooks nice and glazes nice and slowly. So preheat the oven at 160 degrees. You can go a little bit lower if you want, um, but that's a great temperature. And then it's a matter of just pouring some of this over the top there. Look at that. Oh. You're liking that now, aren't you? Beautiful. I'll just do this nice. And, this is where we grab a glass of champagne, put the Barry Manilow on and <laughs> dim the lights a little bit and just sort of... Just smooth that on nice mm -hmm. and gently like that. Yep. Bom, 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 bom. <laughs> and then around, make sure you cover it all up. Now, it spreads out nice and thin because the glaze is really hot and it spreads up. But, but you is, want it to go on when it's hot. Yeah, I, I mean, cool it down, but it just spreads nice and evenly. It's a lot easier to, to work if you've got it at the start. Now, I put about, you know, a quarter of it on now. And then I put it into the oven. The other thing I like to do is some a little bit of fresh herbs. I've got some rosemary here that I stole from uh, someone's garden. And I'll put oh, you've got a beautiful herb garden at the front. At, at La Luna Bistro in yeah, Down yeah. Street, Carlton North. Yes, yes. you do. <laughs> we've got bay leaves there. We've got everything. I'm in all... fact, we're getting kicked out any second now because they've got a full house of diners coming in here for lunch today. So we, it's, we have. So we're very lucky to have this space. But I will tell you, uh, when you I have a little bit of pull around here, so we'll, we won't be <laughs> chucking me out very quickly. So what we do is put that on there. We pop it into the oven and give that a little bit more glaze. Now, every 15 minutes or so, I slide the tray out and I'll put some more glaze on it, and then I'll put it back in. A little tip is I like to take it out of the oven because it's just a lot easier to glaze it um, rather than trying to do it in the oven and you know, it's really, really burning and stuff. But what I'll do is I'll take this over here. If you stay right there and entertain the guests here, I'll um, put this into my <laughs> oven over here. <laughs> Because he's got one that he prepared earlier. In the magic oh of interwebs. God. Hey! Look at the oven. There we go. Look at that. It's I have, beautiful. I have one of these fantastic ovens. And this is what it should look like at the end. Once you've glazed it a few times, I'll let some of the star anise on there. Another little tip that I probably didn't mention before is, in the tray in the bottom, because you've got all that sweetness or that sugar, I always put some water in the bottom, about a half a litre. You want to cover the bottom with water because that will stop all the sugars from caramelising at the bottom and becoming really sticky and burning. So that water at the bottom protects it. So there's another little pro tip. But and how long has it been in the oven total? Oh, this has been in the oven for an hour. Um, at so all? An hour. You can get it, let it go for a little bit longer if you want to cook it lower, but about an hour is what you need. Um, and a tip is to get this in the oven well before anyone arrives. And you can turn the oven down to maybe 50, 60 degrees, hold it nice and warm. And before everyone gets there, it's already cooked, it's already done, it's already glazed. The house smells wonderful. And then you pull this baby out and carve into it. Shall we have a taste? Oh, I think so. Right. Oh, out comes the carving fork. And we're <laughs> just going to, oh, look at that. I'm just going to take that piece off there like that. You always start at that end oh, when you carve. I do, I do. And I'm just going to bring this over here. Any pro this. tips for carving? Well, I hold the knife on this, the, the fork on this side and then a good carving knife and back and forward like that and then you look like you're playing down, the violin yeah, yes exactly and just peel it off like that and oh then like i that. hope you can see on the screen how juicy that looks oh it's, fantastic there's no dryness at all in there it's just I wow just, i don't know if you can see but i'm actually starting to foam at the mouth yeah, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just, but my, my taste oh, buds yeah. are going nuts so it's just yep. kind of just slicing it nice and gently um, like that, taking that nice piece of ham off, making sure you've got plenty of that glaze on the bottom. Now, in the powder of the tray here, you've always got some of that glaze to sort of take yeah. off there and pop on top of it. And that looks quite gelatinous as well in the bottom. It is nice and gelatinous here. And you take some of that. Oh, look at that. Hello. Normally, we put it on a plate, wouldn't we? We're just going to... Oh. And now, tell me, when you're doing the carving and you get to the bone, any pro tips on how to 
you know, keep your leg going right through the mid middle of January so that, you know, you've, you've kept going. Are there, you hit the bone and then come around. Can you explain to us the you, best way to keep going? You just keep cutting around the bone. So you just keep on taking slices off till you get these lovely big slices and around. Just keep moving around it till you've taken all the outside of it. The bone runs down here and then there's like a, a H bone that sits underneath it. That's where the hip is. So one long bone here, a little bit of a bone there, and then the H bone on that side. So you just keep on carving till you get the meat. If you hit bone, just go around it mm -hmm. and keep on going. And a good carving knife will do it. Nice flexi carving knife like this, or you might have something like long and thin like this, and they will go around the, the hand beautifully. Beautiful. And like then, me? have you got a favorite handbag? A uh, handbag? Well, <laughs> Louis Vuitton is my, oh, oh you mean like a handbag, okay. <laughs> Um, the best way is to put it into a cotton uh, cotton handbag. Is it Hessian, Hessian or cotton? Cotton. cotton I, I just yeah. use a pillowcase. Is that wrong? No, pillowcase is whatever. <laughs> as long as it's a clean one. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Put it into a pillowcase. Um, you can moisten it and it keeps for forever. We don't cling film it because it sweats and it turns really quickly. So um, into a handbag and that'll keep it for a couple of days. There's so many great dishes you can use, use with it. Now, ham is also, it's the same as bacon. So if you want to cook some fried eggs with bacon, there's nothing better than some ham with it. Carbonara, uh, frittata, yep. uh, you name it, you can cook it with ham. It goes with everything. It's such a wonderful thing. I think we have to come back in January for all the, the leftover hacks. What do you think? Well, well <laughs> in my house, there's no leftovers. We can do ah. that, but there's no leftovers because <laughs> Thank you. I have teenage boys and everything's just devoured. Now, we want oh, to just have a little taste of it. It smells of buttery. It smells oh. sweet. It's, the smell is fantastic. It's literally glistening. Oh, look at that. Moist, juicy, delicious, mm. and I might do something that's really wacky here. I'm just going to dip it into there and just, <laughs> oh, that lovely, fresh. Mm. It, lit it literally melted in my mouth straight away, mm. but I have to keep chewing because I didn't want it to stop. Oh, that is fantastic. It's so good. Australian pork <laughs> cooked to perfection. I, I can hear Santa Claus. I think, he's, I think he can smell my ham. He's on his way over here. What do you think? <laughs> Peaking a little bit early, but it's good to be planning for this stuff now, right? Mm. Because you need to book your, your ham, for starters, to make sure you get a beautiful quality leg of ham, yep. right? And then you can spend all of this time plotting a fabulous glaze. You've got some amazing tips here, but yep. the, really the secret is to just chuck in flavours that you like. Exactly. With lots of butter, lots of sugar. Uh, lots of butter, lots of sugar, lots of, a little bit of spice in there as well. But mm. um, it's not hard to do. And if you make plenty of glaze, you can always save it for later on, give it to someone else, or you want to keep it for yourself. But it's one of the best parts and it makes everything delicious. Oh, it always does. And the great news is that we'll, this will stay on, on Facebook and you'll be able to go back and revisit this on the day and just follow along with Adrian with his cooking. Let me tell you that the tips will stay on Facebook, but the ham is not going to last very long at all. <laughs> Oh my God, I can't wait to apply this to my face because it's not going to be pretty. And I just think I might just do that off air. <laughs> but it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for sharing your beautiful restaurant with us here today at La Luna. Thank you. Um, this has been all brought to you thanks to Australian Pork and the great people at Pork Star because, of course, you're one of the Pork Stars, aren't you? I, I think I've moved into platinum level. <laughs> I cook so much pork. So, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So thanks, everyone, for coming. It's been an absolute hoot. And we'll you know, have a great Christmas. Yeah.